Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you all the basic features in Project to get you going with it. So I'm going to create a task list. I'm going to link that together. I'm going to add a resource sheet. I'm going to add resources to task. I'm going to save a baseline. Then I'm going to update and track the project. And lastly, have a look at some of the preset reports. So hopefully you enjoy this little video. Let's get into it. So first of all, I'm just going to make this project up. So the title for this is going to be Project A. And then I'm going to have a go, no go task to start with. And then just a few tasks, task one, task two, just go down to task five, task three, task four, and task five. So when you type them in, depending on your default settings, all this date information will be put, populated as will these icons on the actual Gantt chart itself. Now that's because the task mode I've got is set to automatic and I've done that in options. So every project I do will automatically be set to auto schedule. Now default, if I come down the bottom here, we can see it's the default is to have things manually scheduled. You can change that default obviously that's what i've done so they're on auto scheduled i'll just show you what a manual schedule task looks like you get like a little pin symbol there and if i set one here before i actually type manual and just do task six you see that i don't get this information that you can see there so i don't personally like setting things like that but there is a reason for that the reason is that you might not know those dates and you might not want to populate your project with loads of dates that don't really make sense totally up to your personal preference so what i need to do is indent all of these underneath the title so on the task tab at the top there you've got these two little arrows indent and outdent click on that one they all come across the top line goes bold it will summarize the durations of the tasks underneath it. So this is a milestone, a milestone task in projects and in project management has a zero duration. So that's like, you're going to go ahead or not. Then let's just put some figures in here. The default setting is days. Not 23 days, three. Like so. Now, once you've typed your tasks in, and obviously you type a lot more than that, you can link them up. There's several different ways of doing that. You can actually just highlight the whole list, click on this little chain link, and that will link them, but they'll all be follow on. I don't want to do that. You can see the numbers in there. So basically the number is the task that it's linking to. So task two, number two, task two. Just delete those. Now, this, this is a go, no go, and it's a task that drives the whole project. So what I want to do there is do a start to start link. There are four types of link. Finish to start, which is what I just did there. One task finishes before the next one starts. A start to start, this task starts, it will drive when this one can start. So that's like a milestone go that will start that one. A finish to finish task, once one task finishes, will dictate when the next one can finish and then a start to finish where a task starts when another one finishes so if i just double click into this task task one you will get task information coming up and on the predecessors tab at the right end there you've got the different task types uh, if i just link this to task one task two should i say go no go see that defaults see the little letters at the end of it finish to start now it's on the default one you don't actually need to put those letters in but i want this one to be a start to start the lag column and the lead column so lag delay lead lead time so a minus number would be lead time positive number would be lag time i'm going to leave that as it is but in there you can see all the little codes that you have to put ff sf if you're not using the default and even the default one you have to put fs if you're going to be using the lead or lag time but as it is there that's okay i'm going to leave that okay like that 
and it puts two SS in there, which I'm now going to delete because you can type that. So two SS, like so, it's not case sensitive. And then all the rest of these, I'm going to say are just following on. So I can highlight that group, click on the chain link, and they will just follow on like that. So the idea behind this is if this milestone is delayed, if I pull that into next week, you can just do that. Everything is pushed forward because they're all follow-ons like so. I'll just do undo, control Z to bring that back. Now, if you want to display the task names or other information on these bars, quickest way to do it is to double click on the white area and you'll get bar styles coming up. So text, it's normally on resource names. So I'm typing over that with the word, with the letter N, which will put the word name in, which is task name. Click OK and they will be displayed like that. Now it's not on the bar at the top. If you go back into it, if I just double click back into it, it's because I didn't actually have that selected. If you have that selected, you can do the same for that as well. It's got nothing on it at the moment, but if I put name in there, that will do that. So you're good to go. So we've got the links, we've got the names on the Gantt chart. Now let's have a look at doing resources. So down to the bottom here, you've got a resource icon, resource sheet. Click on that. And then I'm just going to add a couple of people. Bill, Ben, Anne. And we'll go for computers, Microsoft, Office, and paper. So you can see how these work. So there's three types of resource, work, which the people are, and then material, and then cost. I'm not going to do the cost one in this little demonstration, but I have um, other videos with cost in. So you can see that there, material, they're all material. You've got material label there. So for example, I could put PCs next to computers instead of computers, because that's what would appear on the Gantt chart. MSO, Microsoft Office, and then paper. Not much to put there, but I'll put pack. You can see how that works. So 100% means that people are available 100% of the time. Rate of pay 10 and overtime 15. And then you can highlight those two if it's the same all the way down. And as you can in Excel, you get these little black cross in the corner and pull that down. Now material, this is per hour, so per use. If I say computers um, are, every time you use a computer, it's gonna cost you 100 quid. Uh, license is going to also going to cost you 100 quid. Paper is going to cost you £1 per pack every time you use one. Now you've got a fixed cost here. You can actually add costs in there if you want. If it's a fixed cost, you've agreed it. Pro Rata, you've got options there. Start of the project, end of the project, or as it's going, which it's on, default. Then calendar. You've got calendars, which you can edit. These are the three default ones. The way it works is the resource has primacy over everything else. So if you set things up in the uh, in the project calendar and then change it in this calendar, this has primacy. So this will be the one that the program looks at. But I'm just doing a quick overview, so I'm not going into any more detail than that. I'm going back to the Gantt chart to attach these people to tasks. Up on the top, resource, you've got assign resource. This box floats on the screen. So basically you click on a task, you don't assign tasks to a zero duration. So task one, I'll have Anne and Ben. And you get the cost there. I'll put computers. They want a computer each. So that's going to be two computers. So that's going to put up to 200. Price is 200. Licenses, assign two of them. You can see the label there. And... Let's go for a pack of paper as well. And let's say they use one pack per hour. So you go like this. You type one forward slash HR, one per hour. That should then go to eight pound, 16 pound. There's two of them. 16 pound is not two of them. It's a two day task, two days. That's why. And that's okay. Let's close that off. And then Let's just highlight the rest of these tasks. I should have stayed in there, actually. You didn't need to close that off. I'll go back into there, and I'm going to assign Bill for all of those, and he doesn't need a computer. 
So you've got Bill on all of those. You've got those two on that one. Everything's okay. Now, if you go to the view tab, you can have a look at the impact of the cost of that. So you've got tables, many tables, and you can create your own. But there's a cost table preset at the top there. Cost. So this project is going to cost me that, which is okay. Go back into tables, put it into entry. So you've got your, your task list. You've got your resource sheet. You've got your resources allocated to task. You're ready to go with this project. You would now save what's called a baseline, which would take a snapshot of this. So if I go to um, project, you've got here set baseline, set baseline. You have the option to set 11 baselines. The first one hasn't got a number, but the rest have. So baseline, first one, snapshot taken. So now whatever changes you make are going to be reflected against that baseline. That's how you can measure against the baseline. Now, for you to update this project now, there is on the task tab, this sort of tool here. There's information. Let's say I go 10% complete on that one. You got, um, I'll leave everything else as it is. It started on time. Okay, so what you should be working in now is not this default Gantt chart, but what's called the tracking Gantt. So up on the task tab, you've got a list of options there. Down the bottom, you've got tracking Gantt. And then that'll show you the same information, but you now see the um, on the right there on the Gantt chart, this side, you can see that you've got the baseline marker there. And then you've got the progress marker there. Now, what you can do on the Gantt chart format tab is you can have a look at different baselines. See, that's disappeared now because I took it off. But go back to baseline one. And you can see if there's any slippage for baseline one, which there isn't. Take that off. What you should do with this now is change this table to the tracking table. So I'll go view tables tracking and then you can see the information there look that you've already done actual start you've got there now i tend to insert a few columns here so if i just insert the actual baseline start column because i don't know when it was due to start and then baseline finish column and then baseline duration column. Then I know what the plan was. So baseline duration, baseline finish, there's duration. So that's the plan. Um, and if you want, you can just move these to the over there. Oops, highlight it first. So you've got actual start actual finish and actual duration now the way i would fill this in so that's the baseline duration planned um that's got zero days that's got two days it's 10 percent done so it's got the marker there actual duration so if i put three days there, it's actual duration obviously that's gone over a bit so you see it there going over the date automatically gets put in there so you don't have to do 100%. 100% is a lazy man's way of doing it, but you could put 100%. And more accurate is to say how long this took. So if I say this took two days, it was planned for three, it's got one day remaining. But if I put a zero in there, that will come back. So I did that one a bit quicker. So there's an extra day saved there. That's how you do that. And you basically go through this. You could put a finish date in there. If I put a finish date on there, so it started on time, so I'll go for the 21st it automatically fills all the information in if you do it like that if you do 100 percent complete it also fills all the information in like that so it's totally up to you how you do it but i do suggest that you use the actual duration it's a more accurate way of doing it now while you've got this going what you should be doing is doing reports if you go up to the top and click on report you've got some different options some dashboard ones project overview i'll just click on that let's see what it does won't give you lots of information, but there you go. That's a, a project overview. You can see that that will update 
as your project goes it's totally up to you how you use that if you go back to reports you've got other ones you've got resources resource uh, over allocated resource overview and you can see the baseline sort of score if you like against actuals and things like that so this has got a bit more information but that's the reports and i can see the project there so what you do now is you just work through the project and it's all complete that's it but you've got a measure of how you've done in the project as i said before there is more than one baseline so you could at certain times through the project add or save extra baselines to measure but what you shouldn't do which i've come across a lot in different companies especially government companies is reset the baseline all the time because if you think about that if you're resetting the baseline all the time you never over schedule you never over cost you're always on time which is just great but that's all i want to talk about on this little video hopefully this give you a bit of a feel for Microsoft project thanks for your time and i'll catch you on the next one